Welcome back to Weatherbox. If you're new here, my name's Steve. I make cool videos about the weather every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And today we're looking at more incredible viewer submitted tornado damage that you can view right now on the desktop version of Google Earth Pro. Let's go. Tornado and more. Uh, oh, cow. Please, Look I at that. Make sure people... More Oklahoma is best known for the May 3rd, 1999 and May 20th, 2013 F5 and EF5 tornadoes that destroyed so much of the city. But some often forget that on May 8th, 2003, it happened again. Two supercells produced four tornadoes that affected central Oklahoma, and one of those tornadoes hit the center of Moore with F3 strength. Google Earth doesn't have particularly good imagery for the 2003 tornado, so I had to overlay an aerial photograph, and this is what that looks like. The good thing about this tornado is that there were zero deaths. This is just northwest of the center of Moore, and this is right when the tornado had touched down. The peak F3 damage happened in this region. You can see the outside walls of the houses have collapsed and the roofs are removed. Here it crossed I-35 and it damaged a couple chain restaurants here, but all of them were able to rebuild. And here on the other side of I-35, we see mainly F2 damage. It's important to note here that the 99 and 03 tornadoes cross paths, but thankfully there is not a singular spot where the 2013, 1999, and 2003 tornadoes crossed. If there was, that might be a candidate for the unluckiest spot in the United States. Next up is the Springfield, Massachusetts EF3 tornado on June 1st, 2011. Four buses and we literally uh, uh, were stopped on the highway and 100 yards in front of us, we saw the, uh, the, the eye of the storm move right across the highway. It was something like you would see on TV. No? On June 1st, 2011, an EF3 tornado carved a 38 mile path through Western and Central Massachusetts, killing three and injuring 200. The Southern supercell that you see here was responsible for producing the tornado. The structure of the storm was so textbook that you think this was happening in Oklahoma, not Massachusetts. The tornado touched down to the south of Westfield at 4.17 p.m. and passed right through the heart of Springfield, a city of 154,000 people. Now, the earliest imagery we have that's after the tornado is from 2012, and after the city of Springfield is when you could really start to see the damage path. Just east of downtown Springfield in the Six Corners neighborhood is where the path becomes very apparent. You can see some houses in early 2012 still had some tarps on the roofs that were damaged. There's a clear lack of trees in this area as you can see the tornado widened a bit. Moving east, you can see a lot of fallen trees in a swirling pattern and some houses were also damaged in the town of Monson. In its 13 mile path, it damaged about 1400 homes and 78 businesses. But if we look at July 2012 and we zoom out a bit, you can see just the clear path of deforestation that this tornado left behind. If we look at the imagery today, the scar is still very clear. If we zoom into the forested portion of the tornado damage path, we can see a lot of small trees and greenery have already started to grow back. I would expect this scar to disappear in maybe the next 10 years. Up next, we got another East Coast tornado. It's the La Plata, Maryland F4 on April 28th, 2002. There are lots of things gone on La Plata tonight. The tornado hit around seven o'clock and it wasn't on the ground long, but the damage it left behind is incredible. La Plata is a town 30 miles to the south of Washington, D.C., and it had a population of around 6,500 in 2002. This black and white imagery is from 1993, and it's the latest we have from before the tornado hit. This F4 tornado was one of the strongest to ever hit the mid-Atlantic. This lawn track tornado was on the ground for 68 miles, killing three, injuring 200, and causing property damages exceeding $100 million. It also destroyed 100 homes and 49 businesses. This is the center of La Plata in 2002. You can see a lot of businesses were destroyed. You can also see a lot of tarps on the roofs of the businesses that remain. There's also a water tower that was toppled here, but I couldn't really find that. I was able to find another damage path image to overlay. You could see the intensity at which the tornado scarred the landscape. Two things I find very fascinating about this tornado. Number one, it happened 30 miles to the south of DC. Imagined if this happened in DC, it would be a complete disaster. Second, towards the eastern end of its damage path, it actually crossed the Chesapeake Bay. I'm not sure how many tornadoes have done that in history, but it can't be a lot. It's pretty cool. 
Today, La Plata has nearly doubled in population. It's a really nice small town. Next up is the Mayflower Valonia, Arkansas EF4 on April 27th, 2014. There you see Valonia. It uh, has come from where that yellow triangle is up across Valonia. It has gone right across the community of Valonia and it's continuing to head off toward the north and east. Mayflower is a town of about 2,000 people 15 miles to the north of Little Rock, Arkansas. On the evening of April 27th, an EF4 tornado tracked 41 miles from the east of Perrin to just north of El Paso, killing 16 people. This tornado crossed three bodies of water, including Lake Maumel and the Arkansas River. By the time it had crossed the Arkansas River here, it had morphed into a wedge tornado. The tornado came ashore within the River Plantation subdivision, destroying several homes. These homes had wood frames and also had inferior attachments to their concrete foundations, which is why the survey team ended up rating it an EF4 and not an EF5. To the northeast, we have an American Power and Light substation that took a direct hit. Here, the tornado crossed I-40, hitting a lumber company as well as a metal building, which was completely destroyed and no longer exists. At the time of crossing I-40, the tornado was wrapped in rain, making it very difficult to see. It was an extremely dangerous situation for anyone driving on the road. And then the tornado passed over Lake Conway, destroying these lakeside homes in the process. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission had to remove 627 tons of tornadic debris from the lake when it was all said and done. At this point, the tornado exited Lake Conway and headed northeast parallel to Clinton Road on its way to Valonia. In this area, it destroyed a few more one-story residential homes with attached garages. And at this point here, it had crossed Route 64, which is the Valonia Bypass. This is Valonia Intermediate School. It was brand spanking new in 2014, construction was nearly completed, and it just got completely wiped by the tornado. We're very lucky that school was not in session during this tornado. The good news is that they rebuilt it and today it looks pretty good. And now the tornado has reached the heart of Valonia, Alon Business 64. Alon Business 64, the tornado destroyed a couple retail buildings along with a small shopping strip here. And here's the Parkwood Meadows subdivision, which had several homes swept clean off their foundations. However, because the homes in this area were not properly anchored to their foundation with bolts, the survey team rated the damage as EF4. Unfortunately, in this area, there was an above ground storm shelter that had a door with a cardboard honeycomb core. And while the above ground shelter stayed standing, a person in it was killed because flying debris hit the door and it hit the person inside. Storm shelters work when they're built with the right materials. That part is very important. Up next, we have a tornado that happened one day later in Louisville, Mississippi. And I should point out now the newest scan that has come in uh, over on the right side there, the north edge of that big three mile wide debris signature is right up almost to the center of Louisville, Mississippi. On April 28, 2014, an EF4 tornado carved a 34 mile path through the south side of Louisville, Mississippi, killing 10 people. Our imagery starts about halfway through the tornado's life where we can see a swath of debarked trees over here and the partial collapse of a metal building. To the northeast, we have another metal building system that has collapsed as well as a cell phone tower that has collapsed. And this is a rare instance where we can actually see street view for a lot of this tornado damage. So we're gonna take a look at that. Two-story houses along Stanley Road here completely collapsed and this is where the survey team rated it as EF4 damage. Here, the tornado went parallel to and then finally crossed Young Crossings Road, and a lot of this damage here was rated EF2. The tornado had weakened just a little bit. Here is our first street view of the day, and we can see this house here was not really structurally sound. I think that's part of the reason why they rated it as EF2, but it's kind of weird just seeing all the trees, even the telephone poles are leaning quite a bit to the north. The CRT televisions in that house look pretty good, but as we all know, those things never die. Here along Jordan Circle, we have more intense EF3 damage and some incredible street view images. Let's take a look. These were taken probably a few days after the tornado had hit. This house in particular, you can really see the EF3 damage. You got the outer walls are collapsing, the roof is completely missing, and a lot of trees are down and partially debarked. This house here looks a bit better. It's probably still a total loss. And this house is pretty much the same with the first house. You have walls on the outside missing on the back and the roof is completely gone up top. Here we have a couple warehouses that were destroyed. This one was a plywood and veneer company, I believe, that got demolished. And this here along Island Avenue, some of the most intense damage that you can see from the storm. Let's look at Street View. And there we go. I think that was a water tower. Here's one of the plants in the background that had uh, its roof ripped off. And you have several houses here. This looks like high-end EF3, EF4 damage. 
You also got a pole pig just sitting on the ground that's clearly out of place. And this here, I can't tell what's going on. I think this used to be the front face of a building and some of this brick facing got stripped off and the second story is gone. Clearly EF3, EF4 damage. One more street view imagery I wanna show to the east of Louisville. Uh, this here is sheet metal that is wrapped around a tree, probably about 20 feet in the air. That's how strong these winds were. I highly recommend if you're interested in this sort of thing, just spend some time around Louisville uh, on street view and look for yourself. There's a lot that I didn't cover. Next up, we have the Bassfield to Pachuta EF4 tornado on Easter Sunday, 2020. Look at, the, look at the signature in that. Look at the rotation that we're getting in this one. All right, so very, very strong tornado. Again, as I mentioned before, debris now lofted uh, at about 20,000 feet. If you're in the town of Collins, you need to be taking cover because here it comes. You're in that tornado warning. Both of these, both of these are tornado emergencies, Jackie. Uh, yeah. Kind of amazing watching all this. Yeah. And, and, and the, you know, there's no reason to believe these storms won't continue to stay on the ground. On April 12th, 2020, a 2.2 mile wide EF4 tornado carved a 68 mile path through Southern Mississippi killing eight and injuring 95. It is the third widest tornado on record to occur in the US and the velocity couplet on this radar imagery here is just insane. Our imagery for this tornado is mainly impressive just because of how wide the damage path is. The detailed imagery starts to the southwest of Route 84 here and continues to the northeast into Soso. Here we can see a few houses that had some high-end EF2 damage. There were some houses here that have blue tarps on it because their roofs were damaged. There was a gas station here in a retail shop along Highway 28 that had EF4 damage. We have a couple houses here on the intersection of 537 and Route 15 that had high-end EF2, EF3 damage. Strangely enough, though, this cell phone tower uh, stayed standing. And here is the center of the very small town of Moss. There was a Baptist church here that collapsed and a couple two-story homes as well. There's actually a photograph from one of these houses in Moss that was found over 120 miles away in Tuscaloosa. The tornado continues northeast from Moss all the way to Pachuta, Mississippi, uh, but unfortunately the Google Earth imagery we have ends right about here. Last one for today, we have the East Nashville EF3 tornado that happened in the wee morning hours of March 3rd, 2020. This is a tornado. Power flashes around First Tennessee Park right now. This is Live U2 as this moves through the parking lot of Channel 5. This is a direct hit. This is the inside of the tornado right now. If you are with Dan Blummel and I, this is the tornado. It is hitting Channel 5 as we speak. Just after midnight on March 3rd, 2020, an EF3 tornado carved a 60 mile path through Nashville and points east, killing five, injuring 220, and causing $1.5 billion in damage. This is the sixth costliest tornado in the history of the US. The tornado damage is not that visible here until it crosses the Cumberland River into North Nashville. Then you can start to see areas where there are a lot less trees. A big theme of this tornado and most downtown tornadoes is blue tarps on roofs that receive damage and a lot less trees where there used to be. The tornado is about three quarters of a mile north of downtown and half a mile north of Nissan Stadium where the Tennessee Titans play. And it destroyed many small businesses and shops in this area near the Five Points neighborhood. This is more of a personal story, but I was very sad to learn that the Soda Parlor, which is an ice cream shop built by YouTube comedian pioneer Olin Rogers, was completely destroyed by this tornado. Here you can actually see some street view imagery of where it used to be and the roof got torn off and all the windows broke and I'm sure a lot of the merchandise inside also no longer exists. Luckily, I was able to visit there in 2018 and I actually got this shirt there that I'm wearing right now. But it's just one of many businesses along this whole strip that were declared a total loss. The tornado continued eastward through the east end neighborhood causing more EF2 damage. Continued east through Maplecrest, another highly populated area. And here at the Donaldson Christian Academy, I think there were a couple buildings here that got destroyed and the damage was rated in EF3. Moving east, the tornado narrowly missed a target, continued over what seems to be some type of quarry or mining facility, and traveled pretty much parallel to US 40 through a lot of the eastern Nashville suburbs. Here the tornado hit some more houses, barely missing a Walmart and a Lowe's. These are a few Save a Logistics warehouses that took a direct hit. This Amazon distribution center uh, was under construction when the tornado narrowly missed it. It's finished today. This is Mannheim, Nashville, which I think is like a car auction warehouse. I don't even want to know how many vehicles were impacted by this tornado because it took a direct hit as well. And from that point on, the tornado crosses I-40 and continues east, but that is where our imagery ends. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this damage pads video. Feel free to like and subscribe and share with a friend. For the next three videos, one of them is about a form of precipitation. It's gonna be pretty cool. And then two of them are about two different late May historic tornado outbreaks. I'll be gone for a week in late May, so I'm not sure if May will have four videos or three, but I'll let you guys know. Hope you guys have a good week and I'll see you next Wednesday.